Muhammad Ali. Pioneer. Uh, there were pioneers before him. He copied from them, but great ones do that. They copy and they make it their own. They change it a little bit, tweak it a little bit. He copied from different people where a little bit of charisma, showmanship, and flash, and ideas. He grabbed, he grabbed some ideas from the great Jersey Joe Walcott, who used to pick up his trunks a little bit, adjust his trunks, walk a little bit to the side, walk to the other side. You know, Ali took it to another place. He took it to where he made it to shuffle, the Ali shuffle. But he got the ideas from great people like Jersey Joe Walcott, who was, as I said, in his own right, a great fighter. And he even said he got ideas from wrestlers, you know, Gorgeous George, one of the wrestlers back in the day, where he, with his antics and his stuff and, you know, his, his shenanigans, where Ali understood, oh, yeah, it's a sport, but it's a business. It's an entertainment business. I want to entertain. I want to make money. I want to put fannies in the seats. So, but with all of that, he had his own ideas he took them to another place he took all those ideas he made them different he made them better uh there was a guy named james corbett gentleman jim corbett back in the beginning of the 19th century who was a heavyweight champ one of the first guys to use his legs to move around but it was limited back in those days of how good he could be at it ali took it to a whole new level to a whole new place to a different stratosphere uh, and uses like never before was there a heavyweight, and not to mention Ali was all, also a gold medalist for the Olympics, representing the United States. But never before was there a heavyweight who moved as quickly, like a lightweight, quicker than a lightweight, used his legs, used the ring, and had scintillating, extraordinary speed with his hands, his feet. I mean, just move all night long. All night long would move. You know, Customato used to say, listen, before his forced retirement, uh, you know, suspension from the ring for three and a half years because of his refusal to go into the Army during the Vietnam War. Before that, the only time you touched Ali was when the referee made you touch gloves before the beginning of the fight. <laughs> you know? And, yeah. I mean... And and that's another part of his greatness. I mean, this was a guy that did things no ever heavyweight ever did. He 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 moved. He threw combinations and, and speed faster than lightweights, featherweights. Didn't throw punches like this. And he broke all the rules, the conventional rules, the the textbook on boxing do's and don'ts. You know, he pulled back. You're not supposed to pull back from punches. You're not supposed to drop your hands. <laughs> he did all that. He made wrong right. How many guys are great enough to make wrong right? He was. He was. I mean, it's wow. And then what he did outside the ring transcended what he did inside the ring. How strong he was, how powerful he was outside the ring, what he stood for, the fights outside the ring. So the social, you know, challenges that he he brought about and change that he brought about uh, all those things and then one other after his suspension for three and a half years he comes back and reinvents himself becomes a whole becomes a whole different alley a whole different version of himself it's one thing to be great in one part of your life to be great in two parts of your life he came back, his skill won for him the first part of his life, his career, and then he came back and that skill was eroded, it was diminished. It was, it was. He was never the same athlete, never the same fighter. He reinvented himself and now instead of winning with skill, he won with will. He won with will. We didn't know if he had that kind of will really because he had so much skill. You know, he's like the typical version of the golden boy, you know, that's so pretty and so good you you don't know if they're if they earned the right to get your respect because they're so gifted like you just think they're lucky they just have that gift and you don't know if they have what it takes underneath that you want them to have that grit that toughness that determination 
that will. Well, when you found out Ali had it. He had that too. You know? It's kind of like Sugar Ray Leonard when he was he was the golden boy, you know, the Olympics gold medalist and everything, welterweight, of course. And, you know, undefeated. And people didn't appreciate him enough, some people. They didn't really appreciate because he was so skilled, he was so pretty, it was so natural to him, you know, that you figured, ah, oh, gee, but, you know, he doesn't earn the right for us to give him that kind of adulation. You know, he hasn't earned the right. We don't know if he's tough, if he's a fighter. We don't know. Well, you found out in the Dur- you found out in the Duran fight. You found out in the Duran. He lost that fight, but he won. But he won the adulation of and respect of fans that he didn't have before that. And a- Ali did that. Yes, the guy. The guy was a pioneer. The guy, you know, did things his own way, like Sinatra, and that song. I did it my way. Uh, he did it his way, and um, he paid a price for it too. Paid a price for it, but he was willing to pay a price. You know, he was damaged the back end of his life with Parkinson's. There's no hiding it. Nobody loves and tries to protect his sport more than me. But you got to be honest too. When you know, it, it was connected to the punches he took in the second half of his career. Uh, when he no longer had the ability to float like a butterfly and sting like a bee, uh, you know, where all he had left was, in some ways, was his character, you know. And um, but it was great character, and it allowed him to make great history and win great fights, even when he wasn't the same athlete anymore. He was special. He was special for all those reasons. <laughs> 